Hey everyone, it's Michelle from Nannies on Call. Each week we bring you new videos to educate and inspire you to be the best nanny you can be. Okay, so we have a topic today that we've dealt with in past videos a little bit, but we're gonna dive a little deeper into each topic. And so I have five tips on preparing and having your nanny video interview. So as we know, things have changed. It used to be that almost all families and agencies interviewed nannies in person, at least for the you know first meeting. Um, they might have calls or something after that if they wanted to follow up. But now it's the opposite. Everyone is interviewing by video for the first time. They're doing it to protect themselves from COVID because that's the time we're in and to limit their exposure to different people in their households. So it's really important that nannies brush up on their video skills, which is something they haven't had to do in the past. Some nannies have if you've moved across the country or taken different positions, but most nannies have not had this experience. So we're going to give you five tips to get you to have the best nanny interview you can have by video. Okay, let's start. So tip number one is to set up your technology. So different families and agencies will use different technology. Of course, there's Zoom, FaceTime, Facebook, um, Google. There's lots of ways to meet up uh, virtually. And so you need to make sure you're up on whatever the family suggests or if the family isn't suggesting something or the agency isn't suggesting something, then you need to have something that you're comfortable using that you can suggest. So know the technology before you use it. If the family suggests Zoom and you haven't used it before, make sure you set it up on your phone or your desktop or your iPad ahead of time, test it out, call a friend, use it so you know how to use it. I can't tell you how many nannies I interview who, where we spend the first 10 minutes troubleshooting to help them figure out the technology. That shouldn't be happening. Uh, you need to know how to use this technology before meeting the family. So make sure you've tested it out before you meet the family or the agency so that when you start at your interview time, you are ready to go and you're there on time. And of course, that takes us to point number two is always be on time. Uh, one of the things I'm finding with the video interviews and the nannies I'm interviewing is that they seem to arrive, you know, anywhere from, well, I own at nannies on call. We only allow nannies to be five minutes late. If they're five minutes late, we cancel the interview. So we have lots of nannies signing in five minutes late. And the reason they're signing in late isn't because they weren't trying to log on right at the, at the time. It's because they, couldn't get the technology working. So usually they'll call on the phone or they'll message or email me and say, oh, I, I'm trying to get on, I'm just having trouble. So that goes back to the first point, but you really need to be on time. This is no different than if you were arriving at someone's house for an interview. The first impression is very important. And if you arrive first for the first interview, the family or agency will assume you will be late for everything after that. So make sure you're on time for the appointment. Okay, the third one is set up your personal space. This is also a big one. These are five big points. I'm telling you, they're very important. So as you can see in my space, I have a blank wall over here. I have my nanny's uncle bookshelf with some nice uh, um, items and books and our nanny's on call logo up there. So I've set my space up so that when I'm talking to people, this is what they see and this is what nannies see. I understand that not everyone has an extra space like this in their home. I've turned my second bedroom into my office, so or my third um, bedroom into an office. So not everyone has this ability, and I get that. But as you can see over here in the bedroom, there's a blank wall. I could turn and be with that wall in the background. Um, you know, the, the door when you walk in is white over here. You can't see it, but there's a white door. You could line yourself up in front of that door and have the interview in front of that door. You can line yourself in front of a closet. Uh, there's lots of places in the household, no matter where you live and who you live with, so that you can set up your space. So the second part of this same part, the same topic of setting up your space is make sure the lighting is good, okay? So right now, my window is here on the other side of the camera, so the light is facing me. If I were to turn around and have my back to the window, 
I would be dark and the outside space would be light. So you want to make sure that you're setting yourself up properly. So have, have a light going, um, make sure people can see you when they're on the other side, that they can see your face, your interaction, they can, everything's visible for them. And then third, which goes in line is make sure it's a quiet space. I know all of you don't live alone. Some of you have roommates, maybe some of your roommates are even working from home right now, so it's not a quiet space. So going into your bedroom and shutting the door, no, I don't want to see you sitting on your bed and doing it from there, that's not appropriate. But standing against your closet door again, or standing against a blank wall, all of those things are beneficial, but it can be very hard to hear if there's lots of outdoor noise. I've had nannies call me from lobbies and their cars, and those just don't work, unfortunately. It, if you were interviewing in someone's home, that's not the kind of interaction you have. So make sure you have a quiet, appropriate space to do your interview in, okay? Great. So number four, I think we're up to, is your appearance. So I have a nice top on, it's clean. I didn't just roll out of bed and roll into my interview, right? Because now you don't have to leave the house to go to an interview. So lots of nannies are in sweatshirt, super casual, um, wrinkled, dirty shirts. I can see that through the video, okay? So you're not fooling anyone. So make sure that you're nicely dressed, you've brushed your hair, you've taken a shower, you're presenting yourself as you would in a face-to-face -face personal in-person interview, okay? Um, you know, you can be wearing potentially your pajama bottoms on the top if you feel like you wanna do that. But just remember, if you leave the camera here and you run over there to grab something, they might be able to see your pajama bottoms. So sometimes that gets forgotten, so you might wanna dress appropriately. As one of my kids says, look good, feel good. So you wanna present that and make sure you're presenting yourself in the best light possible. Okay, and we're already to number five. So be prepared. This one seems obvious. It would be the same. I mean, a lot of these are the same if you were interviewing in person, but make sure you're prepared. Read the job description before the interview. Know the names of the people you're interviewing with. Make sure you have questions prepared. We have some uh, blog posts and other videos on questions to ask during COVID, um, interview questions, tips on interviewing. So you can look at those other videos. I'll put some of them around, I don't know, here. I, again, I'm not great at editing, but I'll put some of the posts of the blogs below um, and try and link up some of those videos up here. Um, but just make sure you're prepared and answer all the questions with full sentences. If I, if the family or agency asks you, you know, tell me a little bit about what you've been doing, you know, or a little bit about your last job. Well, I was a nanny. I can't tell you how much I get that, right? Yes, you were a nanny. How old were the children? How long did you work there? What did you do with the children all day? You need to have provide full answers and be prepared based on the age of their children, where they live and what they're looking for. So that is a lot, but not a lot. It should be everything. I mean, it is everything professional nannies are doing. If there's anything that you're doing for your video interviews that you feel is making a difference, make sure you comment down below so that other nannies can learn from you as well. That's what we're here for. And hopefully those five tips help you. Um, I wanna give you one bonus tip actually that I just thought of that I left out of the what I was saying is that bonus tip is make sure it's set up like this. I have my phone on a tripod uh, so it stays steady. It's really difficult to talk to someone if the camera's jiggly or if they're ha having it on their um, in their hand. I know that not everyone has a tripod. So stack up books, lean it against something, lean it against the bookshelf. I did that for years before I had a tripod. So you can do it, but don't hold it and try and make sure it's in line. So you would be talking to the camera and that's in line with your eyes because you don't want to be looking down. I also don't want to be looking up your nose while I'm interviewing you. You know, these are all things you don't think about um, until you see yourself on camera and then realize, eee, that's not great. Um, so hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps you get a job. I know there are dozens and hundreds and thousands of nannies out there during COVID right now looking for work. So we just want you to be able to stand out and be the best nanny you can be and present yourself in the best light so that you can land that job. 
Hopefully that helps and we will be back next week uh, with another video. Of course, if you have any tips or ideas uh, that would help other nannies out, I would love to hear them below. Also, if you have any ideas for other videos of things that we can help you with, I'd be happy to record that video. And finally, subscribe, like, do all the things so that you get notified every time we put a new video out and you don't miss anything. Hopefully that helps and I hope you have a great week and we will see you next week. Bye.